So in this short bonus video, we're going to talk a bit about Edmund Gettier's counterexamples to a particular uh, very old theory of knowledge. So while it's not going to be our focus in this course, um, for a while, particularly in the mid 20th century, epistemologists were really interested in trying to analyze knowledge. They were trying to give necessary and sufficient conditions for someone to be knowing a particular proposition. And for a long time, it actually seemed like this was a very easy project. So a very old view of knowledge is this justified true belief theory that we saw in one of the earlier components. And the justified true belief theory says that you know P just in case you have a justified true belief that P. Now we already motivated each of these as a necessary condition on knowledge. We saw that it looks like you need to believe something in order to know it. It looks like it needs to be true in order for you to know it. And we saw that, well, we want to be able to distinguish merely accidentally true beliefs from genuine knowledge. And the idea that justification has something to do with it is an appealing thought. You might think what distinguishes that merely accidentally true beliefs from knowledge is that you're not rational in having um, the merely accidentally true beliefs. And indeed, this is the idea behind the justified true belief theory. The thought was, well, once you add justification to the true beliefs, now you've got sufficient conditions as well as necessary conditions. What Gettier showed was that, in fact, that this is not true. It might be that these conditions are necessary. It might be that you do indeed need to have a justified true belief to have knowledge. But he showed that there are cases where you can have justified true beliefs, and yet you still intuitively seem to lack knowledge of the corresponding proposition. And basically the structure of all the cases is that you have a reason, a good reason for believing the true proposition, but the, but the reason is in some sense either misleading or disconnected from the facts in an important way. Gettier gave these slightly more complicated examples using inference. The idea was that um, he constructed a case of justified true belief without knowledge by starting with a proposition that was false but that you had a justified belief in, and constructing a case where you infer a true proposition from that, usually a disjunction. But these cases involving inferences are a, a little bit unnatural. So there's actually a much simpler kind of case that makes the same point. And in fact, we actually already saw one of these cases in the earlier videos. I snuck it in, even though I didn't say it was a Gettier case. And it was the Mirage case. So let's return to our picture of the Mirage. So I'm stranded in the desert. And I'm subject to this Mirage. It seems to me um, that there's this oasis in front of me. And the reason is because, well, there are these things, mirages, there are, they tend to be illusions of, um, of water in the distance, and I am subject to one of these at the moment. Whatever way the light is interacting with the heat and the distance, it seems to me that there is an oasis in the distance. I have this particular visual impression. But we further suppose that there is actually an oasis in the distance, but it's hidden maybe behind some rock. So I can't see it, but there is in front of me an oasis. Now it's not the same one that is appearing to me in the mirage, but there is an oasis in the distance. The last thing we should be clear about, and be a little bit clearer about than I was earlier, is that we'll imagine that I have no knowledge of mirages. I don't know that mirages are a thing. This is crucial, as we'll see in a moment, for me having a justified belief. But if, I, if it seems to me that there is water in the distance, I have absolutely no reason to be sceptical of that, because I don't know about the existence of mirages. Now let's look at this case and see what does the justified belief, what does the justified true belief theory say about it? Is this a case where you know that there is uh, an oasis in front of you, according to the theory? And it looks like according to the theory, this is indeed a case where you know there is an oasis in front of you. So let's go through each of the conditions and see why. Well, do you believe there is an oasis in front of you? Well, yes, I do, because I'm subject to this mirage and I'm not aware of the existence of mirages. So I go along with how things visually seem to me to be. Is it true that there is an oasis up in front of me? And we said, yes, it is true. Um, now, the reason for its being true is disconnected for me from the reason for which I believe it, but it is indeed true that there is this oasis in the distance. Finally, am I justified 
in believing there's an oasis in the distance. Again, we deliberately set up the case so that we want to say the answer to this is yes. Remember, I don't know about mirages. And failing any knowledge of mirages, it looks like if it seems to me like there's water in the distance, then that's what I should believe. Now, I, in this case, I get unlucky um, in, a, in a very subtle way in that the evidence I have would in usual situations be misleading. But it just so happens that the kind of bad luck of the mirage is sort of cancelled out by how facts actually turn out to be on the ground. So we do want to say I'm justified because things really do seem to me like there's a, an oasis in the distance and I have no reason to be suspicious of how things seem to me to be. So according to the justified true belief theory, this is indeed an example where I know there's an oasis in the distance. But let's think about our intuitions now. What do our intuitions actually say about this case? And I think it's pretty obvious that we want to say that you don't actually know. In spite of what the theory predicts, you don't know in this case that there is an oasis in the distance. Because even though your belief is true, and even though it's justified, it still seems that you're getting lucky in this hard-to-pin-down way. Because your reason for believing that there's an oasis in the distance really has nothing to do with the truth of your belief. As we saw when we put it in Nozick's terms, it easily could have been the case that there was no mirage, sorry, that there was no oasis, and yet you continue to believe there was one because you continue to be subject to the mirage. So what's missing, Gettier points out to us, is in cases like these, is this kind of reliable connection between the truth of the batter and your beliefs. And surprisingly, that connection can be missing even when your belief is justified. So that is one kind of example um, with the structure of a Gettier case. It's a case where you have justified true belief and yet you lack knowledge. And you seem to lack knowledge because you lack this reliable connection between your beliefs and the truth. As I said, we're not really going to be focusing on the project of an analysing knowledge. It's not going to be a central part of the course. Uh, but this is something that's obviously good for you to be aware of if you're not already.